And welcome everybody in Twitch chat and on YouTube for our next deck. We have Jund Midrange. So uh, this is another donation deck where we have uh, just a lot of different things here uh, in this deck. Um, I'm kind of excited to play uh, Vraska Golgari Queen with Midnight Reaper and Judith. I think that's kind of cool how we can sacrifice... Uh, like some creatures that can either deal damage or draw cards, depending on, on which one that we have there. And Midnight Reaper is just a really good card, so like that should give us a, a good amount of card advantage here um, with the Reapers. We're also playing some Vampire Sovereigns. So we got some Flying Sea Drinos, get to drain the opponent, uh, which could be pretty valuable to pair with Judith with the loss of life and Judith also pinging them. Maybe we can kind of finish some opponents off with those. Or if we're losing too much life from our Midnight Reaper, we can kind of gain them back. Uh, so that's kind of cool there, too. Um, and then, you know, we got, like, just a lot of other just kind of good cards with Jund. So we'll see how these play out. Um, uh, you know, we'll see how this, this kind of stuff all plays together. Usually we haven't seen Judith in, uh, you know, mid-range decks that are trying to go for the late game too much. So that'll be interesting to see how it does. Uh, kind of the same thing with War Boss. We have like the one War Boss in there. Like these are really aggressively slanted cards, um, but then the, most of everything else in our deck is um, wanting to get, have a longer game. So we'll kind of see how how those play together. Um, only got two Rekindling Phoenix. This card is is incredible. We'll see if we need more of those or not. Um, I like the fine finality. Ravager Worms is a card I haven't played too much of, so I'm excited to to try this one out. And yeah, we'll see if if Vampire Sovereign can actually live up to the five mana, the five mana cost. Uh, five mana, five mana cards in standard, especially in these colors, are incredibly good. You know, you have things like Doom Whisper and Vivian and Elvis Reborn, and uh, other things like that. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see if this card can uh, live up uh, to like this CMC because there's a lot of competition there. So. Um, yeah, that'll be that'll be fun to see. So let's go ahead and try it out. We got some yeah, we have Angrath too. It's a five mana card there. We got some Jun mid range. Alright, Jun mid range. Oh you know me, I would love me some Vivian. I'd always like to add it more Vivians into every deck. Do you think that the sacrifice two creatures, opponents sack one and lose two life would work well in this deck? Okay, so Priest of Forgotten Gods. I, I don't think we have enough cheap creatures for Priest of the Forgotten Gods with this deck. Yeah, I don't think we have enough like cheap creatures to sacrifice. Oh yeah, Biogenicus, that's another good five drop. Five mana slot, the competition at that five mana slot is is fierce. And that's not something that's different from other standard formats. Like, that's something that, that's pretty, pretty normal standard formats to have really good five mana cards kind of throughout the board. That's like the, a spot for a lot of mythics. Simic Guild Gate. Playing against Gates. So I, I do like having the... Uh, Oops, wrong button. Do you like having the Midnight Reaper against Gates? Um, I think I'll get it down right now. Even though we're missing out a point over the Judith. Because they could just have the Gates ablaze immediately. Which they did. Alright, I'm getting... Um... Go with another one. Certainly glad we hit that land drop. Alright, getting the Bant Flash deck up on YouTube right now. Do we have two black? We do not have two black. Well, thankfully, with the help of Judith, we can still kill the, the Gatebreaker Ram if they block, and they did. Alright, 
All right, band flashes uploading. Good to go there. It used to be four mana that was always fought after over. At at some points, yeah, four mana is, is also a uh, yeah yeah. There's certainly been times where four mana has been a lot of things, but it's kind of traditionally been five. Ooze with wilderness reclamation is fun. I can see that. Hmm. So I could have a hasty Ravager Worm. The Gates deck Balance struggles with Planeswalkers balance. just kind of in general. So I want to get the Planeswalker in play and start taking it up and kind of making it that we could ultimate Vivian in a few turns. They, they usually have like Explosion as, as kind of about the only thing. Multani, that's different. So if we can Meet tempt that, my newest friend. we have two mana left. Um, do I want to take the land? I kind of want to take the land. I've started to see some mass manipulation main deck, but I haven't seen it universally adopted in the main deck. I've seen it almost universally, like basically universally adopted in the 75, but I've seen a lot of people still playing it in the sideboard. But yeah, that, that is, that is an, another option that uh, our opponent could have. That guild summon card's pretty good. I've seen things that would break someone like you. Hmm. We give this haste, we get to do 11 to them. So Vivian's threatening ultimating. Oh, 5-1 for Bant Flash, sorry. I'll update that here. Good catch, thanks. Donation decks are, are just $20 for a donation deck. Lots of information down below in the info panel about all that. You know, you can, that's where you can, uh, you can hit the donation banner as well there to like, to get to the link to donate. And uh, yeah, you, you can pick out whatever day you want me to play it and first, second, third, or fourth uh, on that day. So you can be like, hey, play it tomorrow first or you know, play it on Thursday, third, or so on, so um, just in the donation or uh, in the panel underneath. So between Judith and then Ravager Worm, and also like Vivian Ultimate, I, I mean, I, I don't know what our opponent can do here. They could like mass manipulation, take Vivian and rekindle and rekindling Phoenix and the Ultimate Vivian. Two, three, four, five, six. They're only at six gates right now, so they're not. They can't just play a bunch of zero mana eight eights. Sometimes restoration means retribution. So it looks like they're going to gate to blaze. So I'm going to just send all these upstairs. Um, and then Ravager Worm finish them off. I think, right? Cause Actually, no, because Ravager Worm is only going to be four power. So I guess Ravager Worm won't finish them off. Thanks, Anomaly. Oh, 
All right, and Judith, Judith does it. That's what we wanted to see. All right, got game one. Yep, because now Judith will give our creature plus one, plus zero, and we'll have haste. Hasty Ravager Worm. All right, got game one. All right, Duress is certainly good in this matchup. Uh, Contempt, very good as well. Angrath, yes, please. Red in the Wild doesn't seem so bad. I don't think I want Coil. The creature's usually too big. Cinder Vines is insane. Insane. Is it? What are we going to do with this? Like, blow up a guild summit? Deal, like, a couple damage to them when they cast a couple spells? Hmm. Ravager Worm is a May trigger with the fighting. You choose, or it's choose up to one, so you can... You know, so you can choose zero. Choosing zero is um, an option. I gotta gotta cut two cards from here. I think Golgari Queen is gonna come on out. Um, do I want six mana Vraska? Yeah, I, I could see Cindervines being okay. I'm not sure if that means I, I want to play the card. I, I could see maybe playing it over 6 mana Vraska, but I like how 6 mana Vraska kills their creatures. I think I'm just going to keep this here. This is what I'm going with. I see Cindervines being okay. I don't see it being great. A lot of y'all are saying it's, it's great, but in this matchup. But I feel like they just play really big creatures and kill us with those really big creatures. And Cinder Vine's only target to destroy is like the Guild Summit or the 8 8. <laughs> it does seem like Ravager would have reach with that. I, th I guess, I think that's like the fight part, you know, it can fight flyers. Um, you know, maybe you can't block them, but it can jump up and fight them for a little bit. I could, I mean, I could certainly be underrating Cinder Vines. It, I could certainly be wrong there. You know, I'm, I'm wrong at times. You know, like we all are. Um, hmm. I don't think there's any spell on turn two that I'm worried about. I want to give them more time to draw into stuff. Like they. They just kept, they just kept a card uh, on top, like with the scry, and so since they kept that card on top, it's you know probably something that I that I may want to take. So I liked waiting. I I do want to take Guild Summit though, so there's the Guild Summit. So they could have had that Guild Summit on top. I we have assassin's trophy in the main deck, so I, I brought in the assassin's trophies. Ugh, circuitous route. That's a great card for them. I would have liked to take that card. Oh, I just played the wrong card. I, I meant to play Midnight Reaper. I just played the wrong card. Okay, it doesn't matter. I mean, kind of matters. I don't get to attack with the Midnight Reaper, but I don't know if that attack's really good for me anyway. <laughs> oh, thanks, Darker. Glad you've been learning a lot.
Wild card, Angel of Grace. I needed more for my Angel deck. Prize. Oh, you got a prize, Angel of Grace? Nice. That's a, that's a really good prize. Yeah, that's a, that's a perfect one. That's not good for us. Not too good at all. All right, so Gates of Blaze deals, puts the opponent down to six, and we get to draw four. That is such a good animation. It really is. Yeah, we already we discard, made them discard one mass manipulation to a duress earlier. It's it's certainly like a, a really good reason to play the card. It. it that animation's so good that I want to play the card more. Alright, can we finish off the last six points of damage? It's gonna be tough with our opponent having all these cards. That's a good one. Line finality is pretty good. That one's pretty good too. I probably should have shocked in there and played the Incubation Druid. I miscounted the mana. Yeah, I needed to shock. All right, we need to just draw land, right? No, wait, one, two, three, four. No, I didn't miscount. Okay, never mind. we're good. No, I didn't miscount. Never mind. we're all good. We have seven. I thought we had seven. It shows that we only have one left because I didn't shock. Yeah, no, we have two. So we can find we can just find to get the sovereign back. Sovereign kills them. Alright, yeah, we're good. Uh Ravager Worm and Sovereign. And drain for three. Look at Vampire Sovereign. Siege Flyno, getting it done. Siege Flyno MVP. Yeah, we are we are playing a burn deck. That's what we got. Also, it's pack time. We got to, to ten subs a little bit ago. So we haven't opened up a second pack for that yet. Let's do it. Second pack. Get a mythic. Uh just got some gems. So it was some rare. <laughs> I was wondering what the hell that card was doing in the deck, but it looked pretty sweet. Yeah, it just kind of helps. Yeah, I guess that's what it's doing. It's uh, helping our uh, Judith kind of finish off some games. Here we go. Both of those games are really close. You know, we just had enough for lethal in both of those games. Pretty sweet. Hmm. This one's kind of risky. I would not keep this at all on the play, but on the draw, certainly thinking about it. You know, we don't have anything before Judith. You know, these things costing five and six, like they are forever away. 
Um, hmm. What's our what are our good hands look like? I think I'm learning, leaning towards mulliganing. Just don't want to have like all these expensive stuff in two lands. And with us only having 24 lands. Alright, we just need to get one land with our scry and start branch walking. I'm going to keep this one. That'll do. Yeah, Spyglass works versus Flipped Ascanta, but you have to name the flipped version of Ascanta. You cannot name Search for Ascanta. So you have to name Ascanta the Sunken Ruin. Um, and then it, it stops it, but it doesn't it doesn't work on the front half. So don't name search for Ascanta. Name Ascanta the Sunken Ruin. Um, I'm gonna go Branch Walker. All right, facing gates off again. Facing off with gates again. That sounds better. Yeah, it's weird that how good Gates is. The Gates is like actually a, a good playable deck. I certainly didn't think that e even when looking at like the set review, but it is. I also kind of forgot the Guild Summon was a card when I was doing the the uh, set review. Guild Summon is just ridiculously powerful. I don't gate it. Uh, that's nice, Thrun. I appreciate you, Thrun. That was a good one. Good pun there. I don't gate it. Calico Muffins. Turns out if you give a deck a 3-mana Wrath and an unkillable free Tireless Tracker, doesn't matter if all their lands ETV tapped. It's a good point. It's Yeah, and it's, it's like even better than Tireless Tracker with like the free clue also because you get to just tap lands to draw cards when it ETBs. That, that part of the card is ridiculous. It's so good. Um, do I keep playing more creatures out? Or do I just play this Frasca? I don't really know what this Frasca is going to do for me. But I'm going to play it. Your life's about to end. Hope you're ready. Sacrifices must be made. So the emblem is whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player. So. I kind of wish it was the other Vraska ultimate where it would put their life total to one with having Judith. But it's also it's combat damage, so like Judith dealing one damage won't um, won't do anything. Nice. Took out Dovin with her? Yeah. Yeah, there are certainly some good targets to take out. Like, you know, they could play a big Hydroid Crisis or Gatebreaker Ram, and we could minus and take those out. We could take out a Guild Summit even. We were talking about that card. There's a crisis. We're attacking for six. They vanish all the time. They're down to six. I think I'll play the druid. Can I just play druid and branch walker? They have sweeper, they go down to two. All right, well, I'm certainly... All right, we're playing Branch Walker because we want to hit the land to kind of go towards Ravager Worm. All right, so that one's coming in, and... So if they do blaze this... We're still down to two.
Okay, no blaze. Yeah, Ascanta. It's a great card to hit with Vraska. Alright, so let's sideboard the same. So I brought in Duress, the other Contempt, um, and Grath. I think I did that, and I cut those Vraskas and cut Lava Coil. Alright, anything else we want to do? Cinder Vines, Brontanon. Not brought it on. Cindervine, Vivian. I could see Cindervine or Vivian. That's the thing, it's just so situational. Like Rhythm of the Wild, Cindervines, Vivian could all do things. I don't want theater. I, I we can't just like sit back for like a long time. The the game ends pretty quickly. Like when they, they turn the corner really quickly. Um Yeah, this is fine against yeah, the it's good against Ram, but I don't think it's good enough to to have in the deck though. I can certainly see taking out Vraska Relic Seeker. I don't really like the six mana card. Maybe I'd do that for Rhythm. Alright, I'm going to try that. Pestilent Spirit works on Summary Judgment. Yeah. Yeah, yep, that one works. Yep. Get a, get a Doom Blade there. Sovereign uh, drains the opponent for three whenever it enters the battlefield. Uh, it's how we won the won the last match. Um, so whenever it enters the battlefield, they lose three life and you gain three life. Oh. My eyes are kind of bothering me a little bit. I think I think my contacts are just about shot. I think I need to throw these contacts away and put in new contacts tomorrow. I think the been wearing these contacts for a while you know I, I take them out every day before I go to bed um, and everything but I think they're worn out I believe in you Jay Jack all right this is a good hand you can get that turn three rekindling Phoenix um this is a tough one. I, I do like the land, but I'm not sure if it's really what we want. I, the thing is, is, like if I keep this on top, and then if we have a bunch of other lands, it's going to look pretty bad. But then if I put it on the bottom, it's it's like a card we don't need right now. But if I put it on the bottom, and then we just have like all these spells, and they kill our Incubation Druid, and we can't play things, that's bad. You know, so like either way, we could get punished for keeping it on top or on the bottom. Like, this is... Pretty risky either way. I think I'm just going to keep it on top. Um, because it's our second black source and second red source kind of thing. But even though Incubation Druid does both of those too. Hope we don't have any more lands. Uh, Lasix. Lasix's a little expensive. Can't really afford that. Uh, what, I, what I want is... I want, I want glasses. That's something I, I do want. Um, all right, looks like the top's working out for us with drawing the Vivian. Especially how, you know, I just, I stare at screens all day. Glasses are what I need to get. Good job, Dirk. 9-1, best one ranked with white, mono-white aggro. Love it, good job. out of here I think this is a fine time to get the guild summit out of there We're, the game's not gonna end right away they could certainly draw draw out of their problems of not having land drops with guild summit and we have been rewarded for keeping the dragon skull summit really like to draw a land next turn we can Judith and Midnight Reaper that's certainly the goal of course Vivian can help out with that No one knows the wilds like I do. Hmm. 
It's a little unfortunate. Um, do I want to Judith and Midnight Reaper? I'm certainly playing Midnight Reaper. I could just adapt this, honestly. I'm going to just do that. I'm just going to adapt this. It gets that like out of uh, range of gates ablaze. You know, they, they're sitting at three gates right now. Oh, this is a constructed event thing. Traditional constructed event. We are currently 1-0. And, and up a game here and looking good. We've played gates both matches. I like this deck so far. I mean, um... You know, I'd like to see it against like some other matchups, but we have just a lot of a lot of good cards. You know, all all these cards that we have here: Incubation Druid, Midnight Reaper, Judith, Phoenix, Vivian. These are all really good cards. <laughs> it yeah, Mono White Judith is like it's kind of like Mono White Aggro, but then it splashes for Judith. And I think the other red cards in the main deck are Heroic. No, it has Heroic Reinforcements, and I think it has Light Up the Stage as well. That's bad for us. All right, well they are they are sure out of their mana trouble. You can't stop problems nature. from earlier. War boss is kind of perfect. No, don't tap druid. Tap this. Good game. Because that was going to be 9. Oh yeah, we just had lethal. We were just attacking for 15. <laughs> yeah, basically Mardu aggro. But it's more fun to say mono white Judith. Because it's like all just like the white one drops and everything. No, I think you won interaction. I... I wouldn't want to drop Lava Coil for Spellbreaker in the main deck, but I could see playing Spellbreaker, though. I, I could definitely see Spellbreaker being better than War Boss. Um, but you, you need interaction in the deck. We just played one. We just played a matchup where you don't really need it. But usually you do. So remember, Incubation Druid doesn't just add red mana if you don't have red mana, so I have to put that Lava Coil on the bottom. Which it may work out for us. This looks like Control. And so since our opponent is Control, I went ahead and uh, led with Branch Walker over Druid because Branch Walker and then Midnight Reaper is a good aggressive start against the Control deck. Ooh, they're... They Banton. Never mind, not Control. So they can use Esper Control. <laughs> Doing pretty good, Code Junk. Yeah, I've had a good day today. Um, my eyes have really started bothering me here, though, during this league, unfortunately. So that, that part's not so good. But besides that, doing good. How are y'all doing? You're doing good too? Nice. Had a good day. Um, yeah, this is Lincoln Park. Yep. One more light. Holly B, you're sick. Aw. And it's really cold there. Yeah, it's been a really cold winter. What are you doing over there?
We've suffered through a tenth month of a hundred plus days. Man, I love those days. Miss that hundred degree weather. You live in the Seattle area and you got your first snow and so people are freaking out. So I'm just going to activate this Incubation Druid. <laughs> Certainly seems like Frilled Mystic on the opponent's side. Yeah, I, I like 100 degree weather quite a bit. Vampire Sovereign, do your thing. Attack. Could see this getting settled. Of course, if they do have settle, we get to Relic Seeker. Hmm. We get to drain him again by destroying the seal away. Yeah, hu humidity is kind of rough. Like 100, 100 day heat with humidity, that that's rough for sure. Uh, you know, I'm from like the Dallas area where it's really dry heat. Not much humidity. I'll take what's mine. Drain him again. They're down to seven. I want to coil this 2 2 now. I don't think I need to hold up trophy. Yeah, I want to get this 2 2 out of here because they can't, they don't have the mana to adapt it. And I, I have a mana to pay for a syncopate also uh, with this extra treasure. That's not so bad. Get to chomp with this branch walker and draw card. Thank you. Let's draw some more vampire sovereigns. More siege fly no. wasn't meant to be contained. Come to me. Huh. 
Huh. I guess I could have done that pre-combat. I kind of like sitting back here and blocking with Incubation Druid. I don't think we need to destroy history. I don't, I don't think history... I don't think, we, don't think we need to be that destructive, destroying history. People need to remember what's happened before so they can learn. You don't want to just destroy history. Yeah, not sure what our prawn's going to do here. They, they have to counter Judith. But we got, got good defense. They can like attack all out at like these planeswalkers, but I can just let the planeswalker die. <laughs> Not destroying history in 2019. So we'll keep Vivian alive. The big thing is I want to uh, <clears throat> I want to get rid of like one of the uh, one of the knights that yeah that's a blocker here. Get rid of a blocker. Yeah, so they had to have Settle the Wreckage. Which I think they're playing one Settle the Wreckage. Zerf, doing good today. I've had, had a, a good day. Um... Meet but my as I was friend. talking about a little bit ago, now my eyes are starting to bother me a little bit. Yeah, so I'm going to just attack with the Sovereign after the Judith here. Still just going to play this right now. I don't know if something's going to happen to the Incubation Druid, but we'll just play that, that card that we saw. They did have the Settle. Yeah, we, we got crushed in the ranked games last night. We just kept getting paired against Esper Control, and I did not have a good Esper Control matchup with my deck. So we were getting crushed. Hmm. So our opponent is probably playing... Like four, four Frilled Mystic, four Angel of Grace. Dress doesn't hit those, but Dress hits kind of everything else. I'm going to be playing them. I kind of like basically... Basically everything in the sideboard besides Moment of Craving, I like. But you know, we can't play everything. Yeah, 
Yeah, I need to get some glasses. I'm, I need to switch out my contacts. I've had these contacts. I've been using these contacts every day for, for too long. I need to switch them out. They weren't bothering me yesterday, but they really bother me today. I think I think they've they've kind of ran out. Yeah, I mean, I, I like basically everything. to kind of sideboard kind of quickly and change up the, the top end a little bit. Yeah, I, I could change my contacts. Um, here, if, if, uh, if you just want the dex, exclamation point dex gets you there. There you go. Um, yeah, I could I could change them out after after this league. Uh, it doesn't yeah I can I can change them out so not too much to be worried about there I like th I like having another land here but I it doesn't add red mana that's the problem I think I'm still gonna keep though I think it's worth having the extra land I don't know maybe it's not Maybe I can be greedy and look for red mana. To improve the Esper control match for the angels, um, I think you need. Uh, I think we need a. Some other kind of threats to be playing earlier in the game besides what we have. I just have a frilled mystic. So, like, basically. Like two and three mana, our slots need to be doing stuff. Like maybe we need history banali on three. Um, you know, like the tithe taker on two. Got to got to have things in those kind of the two and three mana costs that kind of pressure them a little bit. Yeah, Saddle is certainly good. Uh, it did give us the red mana that we've been looking for. It's kind of annoying that we can only play one, one card. We don't have a, a second red source. Can't double spell here. All right, so next turn I can play Judith. They frilled Mystic it. I find back Judith and Midnight Reaper. Do I want to contempt that thing? Well, I have the mana right now. No, not really. I don't know, maybe I should just contempt that. Hmm. 
Hmm. Kind of regretting not. Contempting that. Well, I liked how Judith and Judith and Midnight Reaper matched up against the three. We obviously didn't know that they were going to have a fourth frilled mystic with the finality. Yeah, that that second frilled mystic. Certainly hurt. Mystic's a really good card. Uh, finality would have just got countered. Let's get these Brontodons in here. Um, hmm. Do I want Sovereign instead of Angrath? What do I really want Br Bronson on for? Hmm. Let's go with this. One Bronson on, one Sovereign. Uh, your cheese won't melt on your surprise casserole. What should I do? Just have non-melted cheese. I think that's okay. You don't need you don't need the cheese to be melted. You're good. What's my least favorite card in this list? Also, I have a Jun discard list that I want to share with you. All right, yeah, I'll take a look at the Jun discard list. My least favorite card. Um. Hmm. I'm not sure. Maybe the war boss? I don't know, I kind of appreciate the different cards. The Sovereign's been pretty impressive. We've we've certainly won a couple of games on the back of Sovereign already. It's been it's been really good for us. Oh right. I need to just cast that dress earlier because of Shalai. 
Right. I can't dress them now. So I, I could have shocked uh, that turn that I killed the Growth Chamber Guardian and kept them from getting other Growth Chamber Guardians. We need to just draw lands. We need to get to these five drops. Where's our lands at? There we go. It's a start. All right, one more. We can Vivian. Hopefully, no counter spell. We don't know those two. Hopefully, not a counter. Ugh. They still had mana for a seal away. July. We're not dead yet. Oh, never mind. We are dead. I can't cast duress with July on the battlefield, so I didn't. That's why I wasn't casting duress because July was on the battlefield. So. The Angrath looked really bad there, games two and three. Looks like I shouldn't have brought in Angrath. My card didn't didn't look useful. But yeah, our opponent did draw very well. You know, with us seeing their hands and stuff like early, like they did they did draw very well both those games. Drew better than us. Their cards are good though. You know, we were just playing a very similar deck like that with Bant Flash. I, I think those Bant decks are really good. got us. Llanowar Elf. I'm pretty excited about playing Judith against Llanowar Elves. I like that. If you play Bant Flash with Dream Eater, really liked it. Good win con in the late game, especially against Soul Tide Midrange, since its only flyer is usually Krasis. I, I'm not convinced that, I'm not convinced that Dream Eater is better than the other five mana options. So I think there's a lot of really good cards that you can be playing. As you saw earlier, I had, I had uh, a couple Angel of Grace and then Vivi, like I had, uh, my deck that I played uh, last time, I had two Angel of Grace, three Vivian, two Teferi. And... Uh, I don't know if I want Dream Eater over any of those cards. I, I don't think final payment is a good card. I, I've seen things that would break someone like you. I don't I don't think you need to play that conditional spell for two mana. It's just not necessary.
I've seen squirrels hit harder. We didn't hit a land drop, did we? No, I don't think we did. Come to me. Yeah, the paying that life is just not worth it. Do I like Wendy's? Um I've yeah, I've, uh, Wendy's is, is okay, as far as, like, the fast food places go. I used to really like the spicy chicken sandwich. Um, I used to get that a lot in high school, the, the spicy chicken sandwich at Wendy's. Do I want, um... So I want, like how, how much do I want to care about this Vivian here? Like, what do we want to do here? We got five mana. They have a crisis coming. Just like sacrificing my war boss. But then Vivian's Vivian's dead. And we can finality we can find and get back war boss and Reaper. Yeah, so yeah, besides like the other card, yeah, I think that just playing I'm a survivor. That kind of stuff, like cast down mortify is just a lot better than final payment. Scars are lessons written in skin. Alright, so Vivian's down to two. Balance comes. What was the setback last game? Um, I don't know. missed a couple of land drops. Uh, the third game, but our band player just kind of played some some better cards. Frilled Mystic just wrecked us. All right, Carnage Tyrant. Carnage Tyrant's a problem. So I can go Worm and fight the Wild Growth Walker. I can just play Sovereign. No, I could, could just play Phoenix. Yeah, I'm just going to play Phoenix. I think saving Ravager Worm. I guess saving it for Krasis doesn't do a whole lot for us. But I think getting Phoenix in play is, is really good. The Wild Growth Walker just isn't that important. Phoenix keeps coming back, though.
I've been playing your version of Rakdos Burn, but main decking Pestilence Spirits. Do you have any sideboarding tips no for the green black the Sultai matchup? Like I do. I'm not sure if we played against green black Sultai with that deck. Because I only played the deck the one time. It was certainly fun to play, um, but I only played against it the one time. Um, but I, I, I like the main decking Pestilence Spirit thing. Like, Pestilence Spirit's awesome. Uh, if you're playing Pestle and Spirit main deck, I'd recommend having all the, the Carnage Carnivals also. Hmm. Now that Wild Growth Walker is pretty big. Hey, what's up, Zen Streams? Uh, no, I'm not planning on playing Esper Control this week. Um, I am... Okay. I'm gonna need to block Carnage Tyrant. Do I need to just kill Midnight Reaper? Is my life total gonna hurt too much? This gets me two triggers of both. We get to kill a Branch Walker also. Um, I'm playing, like, the four-color discard that we're playing up next is, is kind of like an Esper control. Uh, but it also has, um, Vivian's at four. It's like an Esper control, but it has some, some red cards in it, and it almost certainly will not, like, should not have the red cards in the deck. Just like before. Alright, so they still have a Krasis. We, of course, have Vivian for that. Oh, I guess blowing up the Memorial Folly could have been a thing. Yeah, that, that could have been a thing. I forgot that it did that part. Hmm, and more follies. Yeah, that certainly could have been a thing. Yeah, Ravager Word's animation is awesome. It is really good. How are we doing on mana? So I can go to six and play two things. Let's ultimate our Vivian before they do. Is that a thing? Wild animals I like. People, not so much. The wilds are my shield. And I'd love that lava coil. So I could exile the crisis. Struggling to figure out what to play this weekend, who day? Dude, check out the check out the Bant Flash list. Uh, that I just played last league. Um I liked it quite a bit. It felt really good. Yeah, I would 
didn't seem like anything that I would necessarily change immediately from the list. I would recommend trying that one out. Trophy the Memorial to Folly. Man, Ravager Worm just looks really cool too. Like with the full art. Should play some more Ravager Worm decks. Off to Arena, there you go. So I, th I think I want to just take out Vivian again. And just try to you can't try to ult Vivian nature. if we can. Um, I want to just double block Krasis instead of having to use my trophy. And then if something goes wrong. Something goes wrong, I can trophy. Hoping they don't find Vras's contempt. They haven't seen one yet, though. They're just like mono green. Haven't seen any black cards. Yeah, Wild Growth Walker can grow some more. I don't. That one doesn't matter too much. That one also does not matter. Ultimate Vivian is the plan. Clearly, Simic. Could see finality being a card they have. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Just be thorough and talk about it. The wilds are my shield. Talk about it. Hey, Musley. Uh, our deck's been working out pretty well. Alright, so Vivian kills the Sovereign. Um, I 
every I'm not gonna be able to ultimate Vivian here. Scala. As long as they attack. Most wounds can heal. They attack Vivian. My ultimate plan isn't gonna work. Kill this other Carnage Tyrant. Hmm. me and you strike nature so we get two triggers we deck our opponent 32. I've seen things that would break someone like you. That's good. Um, yeah, we can play that. And this. And uh, this. I've seen worse. Its pain is our gain. So I could like sack a phoenix and like I still have the egg token and I kill Lanwar Elf uh, with Judith's help, but it's a little risky against finality. But of course, if they're casting finality, that means they're not casting find, which find may be a little more difficult for us with these Carnage Tyrants and stuff. I do want to draw the card though. I, th I think it is worth it. I know. I know we don't have to sacrifice anything with the Vraska. We could just choose not to kill anything. Oh, that's awesome, Call Sign. You've been playing the four color gates deck. Nice. That that one I didn't make. That one was a donation deck. Um, I I made the teamer one, but awesome. Glad the four colors working out for you. Alright, this is likely finality here. I won a game last night by blind naming a blaze with Unmoored Ego while my opponent had two cards left in his library and getting two of them from their hand. Wow. Wow, make them draw two. Meet that is awesome. My newest friend. Alright, I, I don't want to have two Midnight Reapers on the battlefield. Uh, worried about like another finality and us like milling out. So I'm gonna go ahead and play the one and draw two. I don't think we need another Midnight Reaper. And of course they're at infinite life because of Wild Growth Walker, so slowly whittling them down right now.
Cywin Boss getting that gifted sub from DJ Polly B. Thanks, DJ Polly B. Oh, that's sub number 12 today. Looks like I was one behind. This has been a hell of a match, hasn't it? Really do appreciate that support. And Dan Knight for hire. Getting in those hype boats. Silent Boss does also. Love it. Love seeing those hype boats. Alright, so they got. Kill that. Good. I haven't forgotten how to destroy things. No one knows the wilds like I do. <laughs> yep, tech's not so bad. We've had we've had Vivian Reed in play forever, which is why we're doing so good. Vivian Reed's just an incredible magic card. We've had it in play for so long. No. Mana hasn't been so bad. Uh, we struggle with red a couple of times. Um, but it hasn't been too bad. Yeah, we had we are real fortunate to have that one Vivian and have it just completely take over the game. That Vivian really did so well. We'll never forget that Vivian. Never forget you, Vivian. The 4x Midnight Reaper has been awesome. And they're finally back to 20. Eighteen cards in library. Alive or alive. Hmm. Well, I got punished for not doing this pre-combat. Yeah, we're at eight. We only need to be a, a tad bit worried with these Reapers. We're at 17 cards in library to their 23. Our two Rekindling Phoenixes have been incredible also. What you getting? Krasis? Krasi? Krasis? Need some new cards and some life. That card won't save them. Like, they know about the Ravager Worm in our hand. Like, they just play Krasis, they're dead. Because we just Vraska kill it. Alright, well, they're dead. 
They know about the Assassin's Trophy also. Oh, don't tap the incubation, Druid! <sighs> Still lethal. Barely, though. Barely. So we have we have a million lands. We don't need to tap the creature. <laughs> All right, what a game! What a game! All right, so other Vivian and Angrath seem pretty good. Another contempt is pretty good. Um, yeah, that was a really insane long game. That was game one. Not sure exactly what to take out. Vampire Sovereign's like our, our weakest card. The Drain Life was pretty good though. Um, like with Midnight Reaper costing us so much life. Assassin's Trophy isn't amazing either. That extra mana is pretty important. Um... Yeah, we'll try to go for the draw next game. If I take out one trophy, two Sovereign. All right, let's go with that. Reclamation and Flash? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, d I don't think you would need, like, you may not need, like, four Wilderness Reclamation. But, yeah, you can certainly build a, a Flash deck with having, you know, one, or, you know, one, two, three... You know, I guess you can play four, but, you know, just playing a couple copies of Wilderness Reclamation to kind of help you out. Uh, with having Wilderness Reclamation, you want, uh, if you have that in your deck, you need card advantage to recoup having the four mana enchantment that doesn't provide any cards. And you have all the extra mana, so you, you need more card advantage to go with, um, to be able to use your extra mana and replace your card. So, it's like Chemist's Insight is just a perfect card to go along with Wilderness Reclamation in that sense. So, you know, playing a, a flash deck like that, you'd want to include some insights. What's Judith doing in the deck? Just being awesome. Messing up combat. Combat. Blech. Yeah, she just... Really helped with combat of just like killing a bunch of like creatures, you know, like we killed like, you know, like land war elves and branch walkers and finished off wild growth walkers and all sorts of stuff uh, that we we're doing with our Judith last game. Had a really good day, track team. Yeah, had a good day. I feel good. We're two and one right now. Um, do I need to coil this wild growth walker right now? Yeah, and Judith's also made attacking really bad for the opponent. That's what I did last game. It, it was really hard for my opponent to attack with us having Judith's. Both attacking and blocking was tough. If they're keeping the Wild Growth Walker on top like they did, they must have some Explore stuff. You know, like a... Like, I'd assume they have, like, another Jade Light Ranger or something. Hmm. So they had another Wild Growth Walker in their hand? They must have just drawn this for turn. Because if they had this in their hand before, they would have played this on turn two instead of the Branch Walker on turn two, presumably. Hmm. 
No, they just had that in their hand. So they have one Wild Growth Walker and four lands. Two cards in hand. That's the good news. Bad news is we're at four life. And so... Playing a Midnight Reaper is... A little daunting. Just a little daunting. Beasts are much more reliable than humans. So we get to contempt the walker. Uh, kill Vivian and deal six to them. Whew. It's even better than contempting the walker. No, stop, stop, tap, stop tapping my incubation druid. I like my druid. I'll be taking that. I'll be taking that. And that's game. Ugh. Really, Mike? Dang. 0 and 4 with Ban? Rough. I guess that's not the deck then. Yeah, so even though, like, I think that attack actually was pretty good there to put the pressure on them. Like, worst case scenario, they have a removal spell for the, um, you know, for like one of our creatures, and then we have to chump with the other. But even even in that case, you know, we just untap and you know, like, they don't have very many cards. And so if they're one of if one of their cards was like whatever removal spell, um, you know, if they had contempt, really, I don't think there was like really that bad of a scenario for us there with uh, playing the Midnight Reaper out. Um, they couldn't like I don't think they'd have. I guess they could have like Ritual of Soot that would have like killed a bunch of stuff, but Finality didn't kill us. Um, it would have came close, but would not have killed us. And our opponent didn't only had four mana anyway, so like they couldn't even get to Finality. Um, why isn't anyone testing out quasi duplicate when it's picked up Esper for Tithe Taker, Deputy Detention, and Bell Hunt? I could see Esper quasi duplicate being a, a cool deck. I could make a deck like that with Hostage Taker, with quasi duplicate and, and all that stuff. Hostage Taker, Deputy Detention, Ravenous Chupacabra, Bell Hunt. Bell Hunt's a cool one. I don't know, because nobody's really gotten to that. I could make that deck. We could play that in a... soon. Maybe I'll make that for tomorrow or the next day. Sounds like a cool deck. All right, three and one. Real good match there. Yeah, you could have Teferi. Teferi's just 
an awesome card. Thief of Sanity in the board. Get some Plague Crafters. Got to take out Planeswalkers. Plague Crafters. Uh, yeah, there you go. Kamikaze has the the link there, or maybe it'll show up. Maybe it won't. A branch Walker? No. Thanks, Devo. Let me see if I can do that again. Uh, see if I can get that to work. Dex. There it is. Yeah, so you can find the Bant Flash list in there. Yeah, Thieves Sandy is a really fun card to play for sure. It's just gets you so many cards. Really hope the opponent does not have any Conclave Tribunals, like anything to exile this Judith, because Judith can just ping off all these creatures. Wow. Just making this attack? They got Pride of the Conquerors? Gotta have Pride of the Conquerors. They're like looking at their hand a bunch. Yeah, they got Pride. I want to keep Judith alive, so I'll just block with the Incubation Druid on this Hazda Marshal. Alright, I'll take it. Maybe they're just looking at what card to play, second main. Tithe Taker. Vanguard. Alright, maybe they didn't. Or, maybe they do. If you run 2-3 to three Reclamation of Flash Lish, do you think 4 Insights are enough card advantage? Um, we can also just play like Planeswalkers, like Teferi. You know, like, like I had earlier, that gets you card advantage as well. Same with Vivian. Uh, that kind of stuff. Um, sure, I'll keep that. That's that's another thing to do. Um, and I, may, so maybe you don't need all four Chemisters Insider. Maybe you do. But that that's, that's probably enough card advantage. Like, Chemisters Insight plus, like, Planeswalkers. You're good there. Um, like that's enough. I'm not sure if you want just only chemistry's insights. Like if you don't want to, like maybe you want to, um, play some number of, like maybe you want like three insight, one precognitive perception. Yes, our, our opponent certainly has Pride of the Conquerors. Wow, I'm dead. That was a bad block. I knew they had Pride of the Conquerors too. I just I just mathed wrong there. I was thinking about the other stuff and just mathed wrong. That was not good. Alright, Vraska coming on out. Vivian on out. What about Golgari Queen? Yeah, I think I keep Golgari Queen. 
Just gonna really lower the curve a lot. Um, war boss. Would I rather have a war boss or an assassin's trophy? I think an assassin's trophy. Assassin's trophy blown up a conclave tribunal. Sounds kind of nice. I guess maybe I shouldn't have all these midnight reapers. I'd rather have war boss than midnight reaper. I don't want that life loss. Um, I'll play an Angrath over a Midnight Reaper too. Actually, Stevo, looking for a donation. Loving to, looking to do a donation deck. Would love your insight. Awesome. All right, send me. Thanks, Stevo. Just send me the list you'd like to play, or you'd like me to play, and let me know what day and what time slot you'd like me to play it. You know, so stream normally from three to ten. Um, so you can choose like first, second, third, or fourth between that three to ten uh, time slot there. And what and whatever day. No, you'd not be insane to cut Angel of Grace and bring in Negate for a control matchup. No, not at all. Angel of Grace costs five mana and Okay, cool. Man, I made a terrible block that last game. Yeah, flash threats are very good against control, though, also. So, like, you certainly need other threats and stuff. You're taking Angel of Grace out. Can't just have no threats. Kind of thing. That's a very good Lava Coil target. Hopefully we draw another red source for this Rekindling Phoenix. Phoenix has got to be a pretty good card for us. towards finality. That's the thing. Rekindling Phoenix helps us get, uh, helps bridge us to finality. So two more mana. We can go finality into finality. looking good for us right now. It's, a, it's the finality countdown. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. It's the finality countdown. Easy block. Saving that life. Alright, I think we got this game. Yeah, we certainly have this game. When our first damage that we're going to take is on turn 6 when we shock in to cast Finality, you know we're doing just fine. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that, that is kind of cool how, like, in their mono white deck, they can pump up Knight of Grace. Because the afterlife token, that is pretty cool. More finalities. It's the finality countdown. <laughs> that uh, I like the the Judith Rakdos deck myself. Hmm. Anything we want to change here? So I want an extra trophy in on the draw. So I want an extra trophy instead of the Sangrath. Just want to play a third Midnight Reaper. now. Alright, game three. Let's see if we can win. Yeah, I hope our opponent doesn't have um, enchant, you know, enchantment removal. Uh, we're not too good against enchantment removal. So we got Bronted on here. Give me some pointers on deck building. Do you mean like in in general? I need I need a little bit of direction. I don't like what. It, um. Yeah, I need I need a little direction there. What what do you mean by pointers on deck building? If you have, Steve, if you have the link here, uh, you can just put it in here. Uh, you could also, you can email me at ToddStevensMTG at gmail.com. So yeah, if you want, if you want to email it, um, if you just, that works. What you could be doing better, or if there's anything wrong, anything you're doing wrong. Okay. I I honestly think that this deck's. I like how you've you built this deck. I think this deck's pretty good. But yeah, okay. I'll 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 see what I got. Um, Question, do every decks want to start first and never on the draw? Yeah, really with standard, yeah. You just you want to play first. Um, that's yeah, that's just actual standard. You want to be first. The only times that you could maybe see being on the draw if it's like a I think about the only time is like a control mirror. Um May, like maybe there could could be a, a specific control mirror where 
you don't want to be where like the extra card matters. It's a good hand for the opponent. So I gotta contempt this Benelish Marshal. And I guess we're doing okay. We're at 14. They'll have a 4-3 and a 1-1 here. As long as they don't have like too much else. We're doing okay. Yep. Basically playing first is a is a pretty big advantage. Hmm. I'd love to double spell. I'd love to play Branch Walker and Judith. If I just play Branch Walker and I brick on the land. Can I afford to do that or should I just play Brontodon? It's either just play Brontodon or try to go Branch Walker Judith. I think I'm just going to play Brontodon. All right, Legion's Landing transformed. We haven't stabilized yet. All right, well now I can coil also if we don't hit this land. So we were not gonna hit the land last turn. This turn we do, but it's a shock land. I don't want to shock. Let's get rid of this potential flyer. Yeah, actually, that, that thing was just going to be flying next turn by just, like, activating a Danto again. Activating the first fort again. Okay. So I can only single spell. I'm not sure if I want to cast Find. I'll probably want to say Find for finality. I think I'm either just playing Judith or War Boss. War Boss is like the better card to have him play whenever we play Vraska, like where we could sack the token that has to attack that they don't block. Um, but Judith's better at blocking, or it's better on the the board. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna play War Boss. Warboss blocks just just fine too, being a two two. And I, I like just kind of getting these tokens out uh, right away. I think the more time we have with these tokens, the better, because they have to attack the first turn. But unlike, um, I'm gonna need to cast finality. Hmm. Unlike uh, unlike Goblin Rabble Master, that token won't have to attack anymore. So next turn, that token can just sit back and play defense. I could see our opponent blocking here with the Tithe Taker to make a flyer. Let's see what they do.
All right. Well, in that case, I'm not going to play Vraska, so I'll just play Moment of Craving or play Judith and Moment of Craving this Vanguard. <laughs> yeah, Chain Roller would be ridiculous. <laughs> And Night Owls getting in on the donation deck hype. Play my pile of crap. I mean, Mardu Riches. Best of three tomorrow, last slot. Perfect. Feel free to modify the sideboard and tweak some numbers. Oh man, a bunch of Captain Lannery storms. Grove of Temptation. Here's this Marty Riches deck here. Let me put this in, in chat so if somebody wants somebody wants to see it. What is that card? Put counters on all the things, make them indestructible? That's a problem. That's not good. Alright, you block the 4-2. You block the 3-2. You block a 2-2. You block a 2-2. Two, two. How many freaking 2-2s two, do they have? That's me going to 1 if I just do this block. I guess maybe I have to have Judith. Judith die as well. I take 6. They don't gain trample, do they? No. Well, we may not have the mana for finality. Yeah, indestructible is a huge problem. That was a really great card for their opponent to draw. Yeah, that was a great card. They they got that before we got our finality. I liked Deploy in the Flash deck. I thought it was just a, a good glue card to kind of hold things together. Hey, what's up, Chris? Thanks for resubbing there for the 14th month in a row. Um, just I don't think there's anything I can do. There's no lands. <sighs> if we destroy their creature, we don't gain a life. We could sack, like, one of our lands and... Gain a life. Could never get to that fifth mana. Just doesn't matter. 
Let's let them do the damage. Yeah, we had a lot of turns. You know, we're at 41 cards in the library, so we had... You know, this went to like 10 turns or so. Ish. I made a I made a real bad block the first game. Real bad block the first game. Don't think I really regret anything I did that game though. It just didn't work out for us. Danto the first fort, real powerful. Twenty gems. And looks like we cracked open the vault. From getting those extra uncommons. Vault progress. Vault rewards. Okay, so let's take a look at our deck. Um, so yeah, this was a donation deck, and J Jack was kind of asking about just um, deck building in general. Any uh, suggestions? But then, and then also, kind of about this deck here. Um, with so one thing in standard is standard. You really want to play lots of individually powerful cards. It's it's kind of harder. Like, there's not as many like really synergy based decks in standard. There are some, um, but a lot of like mid range decks. When you're playing mid range decks like this, you want your cards to in, to be like every single one of your cards to be really good, uh, basically all the time. You don't want cards that are situationally good uh, as much. Um, that's just kind of like. Just a just like a thing in standard, um, so like a card like Vampire Sovereign, while it, it did help us win some games, it's the kind of card that just by itself is not that great of a card. I mean, it's it's fine, but there's just so many uh, really good options in standard of like proven cards that are dominant that it would be kind of hard pressed to play vampire sovereign um you know you have to have a really good reason to want to play a card like this when you have options like vivian like we saw like that soul time match where we just took over only because of this vivian and even just rekindling phoenix like rekindling phoenix is just going to be a better card than sovereign basically all the time um the only only times where sovereign will be better is like if you have to kill your opponent right away with the drain life effect um but like so like here we have two phoenix three sovereign i would just rather be playing four phoenix phoenix is just going to be a lot better card kind of in general it's good it works well with with like the reapers and judiths and um you know it's good against the wrath effects and everything and it's it's just an, an awesome card um there's just not there's not really a reason to play sovereign over phoenix like if you're playing some deck where you uh have a ton of where you need a ton of etb effects um, maybe you're playing if you're playing quasi duplicate where you want to copy copy your spells copying phoenix doesn't work as much copying sovereign works better but for the most part this should just be like more phoenixes so so that kind of thing like just make sure you're not playing uh cards that are underpowered kind of anywhere because because there are just a lot of really good options in in standard so you want to be you want to be playing the best cards you can um I liked I liked our mana base more than than like the previous decks uh, that we that you've been playing like with like all the tap lands. I like how we didn't have any tap lands. That was that was nice. Um, uh, Judith and Midnight Reaper worked pretty well together. Uh, liked those. Um, I'm not sure about this Legion War boss though. War bosses, it's all right. The thing is, is it it doesn't match up against a whole lot of card like other cards in standard. Like when there's other things on the battlefield, it doesn't work out too well usually. Um, it's the kind of thing that I wonder if we should just be playing like some Jade Light Rangers, 
because, you know, that card's really good. But it was all right. Ravager Worm, I was impressed with, actually. I was pretty impressed with Ravager Worm. It felt like a really good card. Um, but yeah, I guess, I guess that's, like, something just kind of in general for deck building. Um, the other thing is... The other thing about deck building is it's kind of good to find cards that work really well together. Like maybe you want to play like a little package. Like that's kind of like what the war boss is in here for. It, it does work pretty well with Judith of making two ones. Um, and then also if the creatures don't get blocked, it works well with Frasca. I, so it is like I, I do like like that little package or like, you know, cards that work well together. So I liked that there. And so try, trying to look for other cards that work well together, that's certainly good. But you want to make sure you're not playing underpowered cards that that work well to go that rely on the other cards being in there uh to do anything but war boss is is pretty good on its own so it's not it's not like we're sacrificing too much power there um yeah i think that's about all i have for judd mid-range here i liked the deck the deck was the deck was fun to play um i think i think what i would change just immediately, is, I, I wouldn't play Sovereign. I would take out all three of these Sovereigns, and I would put in two more Rekindling Phoenix, because that card's just amazing, and I'd put in a second Vivian. Um, I think that's that's just like the first thing that, that I would do right away. Um, I'm not sure if we have enough red sources. Red was kind of tough at times, especially if we're playing Phoenix. Let's see, it says 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, there's only 12 red lands in the, in the deck. Be nice to get like two more red lands in there. Honestly, just a 25th land is just probably necessary. Um, I think I would just take out one. I'd take out one of the two Golgari Queens for a 25th land, and make it another red source. Doom Whisper is a, a great card. There's a lot of really good five mana cards. Doom Whisper, Biogenic Ooze, uh, Siege Gang Commander, Eldest Reborn, uh, Angrath. Just kind of off the top of the head. Well, the so you say we need sixteen red sources to cast Phoenix on turn four consistently. That that number changes when you have cards like uh, Branch Walker that kind of help you dig, and when you have Incubation Druid, also like so that number can't change with with these kind of cards. And if you had like a Jade Light, also it, it would change it. Also, um, I did like the Incubation Druid. I just really like Incubation Druid a lot. Um, but I do think you kind of need twenty five lands. I think like mid range decks where you have fours of five and six mana spells. 25 lands is where you want to be um, at at like minimum, you know, if not 26. I, I, I'm not, I'm not liking 24 lands with, with four or five and six mana spells. So cool. So there you go, J-Jack. Cool. Sounds good. All right. All right. There we go. So that's uh, John at mid range. If you're watching this later on YouTube, uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And that's, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next one.